Hey everyone, it's DOS time, and welcome back to Alter Ego. This is part two of Alter Ego, picking up where we left off last time. This is uh, still the infant childbirth type uh, area of the game. Uh, anyway, we're going to start off by going over here, but um, I actually did want to check out my other stats first. Uh, over here, by pressing escape, you're able to come over here. You get to see how old you are currently in the game. As you can see, we are one year old in six months. And uh, we have no relationship status. I can't believe why. Uh, our current name and our, our occupation, which is nothing. Uh, and then our current uh, stats for family, inte <coughs> intellectual, physical, social, and vocational. And there we go. There's our other things for calmness, confidence, expressiveness, gentleness. We have no gentleness. We are not a gentle kid. Uh, thoughtfulness, trustworthiness. Our current money, which we have $651. If you don't remember, we got a $500 savings bond at the very kind of like beginning of everything so let's move on you're touching something smooth and shiny you pat it with your, your hand a few times confused keep touching it is flat a little cool wait a minute there's a baby in there who is that baby you that's right you are looking at yourself in a mirror isn't that beautiful uh, baby um yeah, sure, I'm confident. You really are quite stunning. You're developing a positive self-image. That is until you look at magazines or watch TV or do anything where a celebrity is involved and then you look like shit compared to them, right? Uh, it is announced you during a heart-to-heart -heart talk with that it's time for you to give up the bottle and drink from a glass like a big boy. Angry and stubborn. Resist. How are you going to show your resistance? Throw the bottle at mommy. You must really be furious, that bottle more. <laughs> it's more than just a casual drinking buddy. It is a constant companion. It has been a source of comfort and weapon against adversaries. You've come to think of it as an extension of yourself. Mom doesn't understand this at all, and you get whacked for being disrespectful. Learn to live with it. It will be tough for a while. You'll turn to Super Duck for comfort. Believe me, cold turkey is the best way to do this thing. Good luck. Now let's go over here and go to this one. You are a guest at your friend Billy's house. His mom gives you both a box of crayons and two pieces of paper. Artistic. Draw. Not on the paper, though. You draw large circles and swirls of black crayon on the paper. Whoops, you drew an expensive on the expensive tablecloth. Tell Billy about the spot. Cover up the spot. Tell Billy's mom about the spot. Your honest is commendable. Billy's mom realized she wasn't thinking clearly and she let you draw on top of the tablecloth. Will you be honest when you get yourself into real trouble? No. Probably not, but admitting this is a trustworthy sign in itself. You're all right. So I was hoping that we could choose that, tell the mom, and then blame it on the other kid. That would have just been perfect, and the other kid gets smacked. Uh, damn, Mike. Uh, you are sitting in a large place, and a furry man walks up to you. He's walking around you in circles. Curious. Point at the furry man. Hey, that man just licked your finger. His head is big and furry, and his tongue is sticking out of his mouth. He makes a sound that goes like this. Huh? 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 Very fast. He comes over and sits on your leg. Grab him by the head. You grab his, his head between your hands. Hey, now that man is licking you all over the face. Mommy says he's kissing you. <laughs> Lick the furry man. His nose is cold, and the hairs tickle your face. He tastes very salty and has bad breath. <laughs> So either we just met a dog or we met a homo, a hobo, homo, not, a hobo is what I'm going for. Hobo is the word we're going for. Uh, you are a large <laughs> department store waiting in line. There is an extremely well-endowed woman standing in front of you. She smiles. It looks like she may be interest, an interesting person to talk to. Inquisitive. Ask her some questions. Which questions do you want to ask her? Hey, do you have a husband? Do you have a doggy? Mommy said that daddy has a thick skull. Do you? I tried very hard to pinch a penny like Aunt Edna, but couldn't. Can you? Do you have a husband? She tells you that she doesn't have a husband. Oh, snap. We are moving on, aren't we? You are alone in your parents' bedroom. There's a shiny silver quarter on the table. Dishonest, take the quarter. It is really questionable as to whether a child your age can tell whether or not something like this is truly right or wrong. You have a vague sense that you shouldn't have picked up the up. Your mother sees you stash something in your pocket. She asks what you have there. You say, this, hold out, quarter. You're not so dishonest. In fact, you are being very trustworthy. It was a temptation you couldn't resist and get a big hug for being honest. No, I still stole the quarter beat my ass. <laughs> uh, Daddy says it's time for bed. No. I don't want to go to bed. 
You fold your hands across your chest, look at him straight in the eye, and begins to pick you up. You say, no. He says, sorry, tiger, and tucks you under his arm. No, cry. You're not going to let him get away for this overpowering you without making him feel guilty. It works. It's Saturday morning, and Dan asks you to help with some chores. The Super Duck Cartoon Hour has just begun. Tell Dad you want to watch cartoons. Damn it, I picked the wrong one. You're already under the trance of a TV set. Dad tries to encourage you to work away. Does it work? Yeah, sure, I guess we'll do it outside and do something. Dan makes you feel important. You use your own special plastic tools to help him, and as a reward, Dad takes you out, takes out a big ball. He throws it at you, close your eyes, and it bounces off your head. Clunk. Awesome. So I, instead of watching cartoons, I get child I get child abuse done to me. Um, you are in a sandbox playing with your favorite toy. A larger, stronger child pulls it away from you and screams, "Mine!" Angry. Grab it back. The child seems stronger than you. He puts three fingers in your mouth and tries to push you away. He is holding the metal toy above your head. Try to bite him. Ah! The other baby yells, you bit him hard. He drops the toy and runs off. Exactly. Don't touch my shit. <laughs> Time to feed the fish. You pinch a small amount of fish food between your fingers and tap on the glass. There is no sign of Gabriella. Confused. Look for Gabriella. You put your hand in the fishbowl and look for Gabriella. She is stuck under a rock. She is stiff, and her eyes are puffed out. You think that she might be sick. Call for mom. <sighs> Gabby floats up to the surface from under a big gray rock. Her eye seems very puffy, and her body is stiff. You re you're relieved to see that she hasn't jumped out of the bowl. Start to leave the room. Actually, no. Didn't I just say get mom? Ask mom. Mom stutters through the answers to your question. She is uncomfortable and sad. Mom explains that Gabby can't swim anymore. Mom says she's dead. She has gone away. How can that be? She's right there. What is dead? You wonder. You confused. Mom says that Gabby has to be taken out of the bowl. Flush Gabby down the toilet. <laughs> Even though mom has on a sad face, you giggle at the thought of Gabby swimming in the bowl. You wonder if she will tickle you the next time you go to the bathroom. He really, it isn't a real laugh, but you don't know what else to do. Yeah, that sounds about right. You are in the back seat of a car doing a very long ride. Tired. Ask questions. You can ask questions. Are we almost there? Miles says we'll be there soon. Kick your feet under the front seat of the car. Thump, thump, thump. You were told to stop. Continue kicking. I told you to stop that. Continue kicking. Knock it off. You're succeeding. Sharing your discomfort with everyone in the car. You can sleep peacefully now. You were eating at the house of one of your parents' friends. You were told to be on your best behavior. Something that you ate just disagreed with you, and now you feel very sick. Queasy. Throw up and get over it. Without any regard for anyone around you, you throw up. It splashes in the dish in front of you, gets all over the roast. Your mother is mortified. Your father is much more understanding. This is something you will all get a great laugh out of 20 years from now. <laughs> you are still not completely familiar with using the toilet. It's still quite fascinating to you. You have just finished, and you have cleaned yourself like a big boy. Playful and curious, watch the toilet paper disappear into the toilet. Make a boat out of your mom's brush and float it in the bowl. There we go. Oops, it doesn't float. Flush the ball. Whoosh, it spins around three times and tries to go down the pipe. It goes halfway down. The water slowly rises and spills out of the toilet. Mom rushes in and you stand there looking at your mom with your index finger hooked to your bottom lip. The cutesy routine just doesn't work. You are sent directly to your room. Damn. I was hoping it would. Okay, let's look at our stats. We're technically two years old at this, uh, at this point. We're still doing good, though. Today is Dad's birthday and you would like to make him a breakfast. Extravagant. Try to make eggs. What kind of eggs do you want to make? Scrambled. You must think that young children can do a lot. The best thing you can do is throw them in a pot raw and give them to dad, which is exactly what you do. He's in bed sleeping. Feed him raw eggs with a spoon. Boy, is he surprised. He probably thinks this is going to be the best birthday ever. Mom is laughing very hard. Dad's egg is dripping off the bed, or onto the bed. The phone rings while daddy is ironing his shirt. He must leave you alone in the room with the iron. Oh, this is really genius, Dad. You know what happens when you get, when a parent leaves a iron, hot iron in there? Help iron the shirt. The iron is heavy and hard, and you manage to try to push it across the shirt with two hands. Ouch, you burn your hands on the hot iron. It falls to the floor with a thud, and when you try to pick it up from the floor, you pick it up with the metal part and burn your hand badly. Great. So now we're effed up permanently. Thank you, Dad. 
Dad must get his teeth fixed, and you must go with him to the dentist. Mom is busy at work, and Dad couldn't find a sitter. You sit in the waiting room for a very, very long time. Dad must run out and put money into the parking meter. Dad sits you on the floor, gives you a magazine and a magazine to leaf through, and tells you to behave. Tear the pages from the magazine. Mischievous. Tear the magazine. There we go. You walk over to the pile of magazines, stand... Re on the magazine stand and into the pile you pull out a magazine your coordination isn't terrific as you lift it off the table you cover tears with a loud rip a lady spies you with a corner of her eye and gives you a dirty look stick your t <laughs> blow her a kiss what a little Romeo <laughs> come here you little doll go your social sphere takes a wicked hop. You are all set to develop charm and grace that can really take you places. The lady gives you a nice, thick piece of chocolate. Oh. Uh, <laughs> you have just passed through infancy. A brief look at your life up to this point shows the following. Your family life has been positive and nurturant. <laughs> nurturant. Uh, and as a result, you have begun to form critical bonds that are important during this phase of life. Physically, you have been a, not a very healthy baby. Socially, during this phase in life, nothing much is really expected of you. After all, you're still much too young to throw a successful cocktail party, and frankly, anyone who still dribbles on himself probably wouldn't make the best ideal dinner guest. However, by now, there are some things you should have mastered. Your progress shows the following. You have the type of child... You have been the type of child who charms the lollipops off of people. You have been the type of child who is huggable and gets his cheeks pinched by old ladies with bright red lipstick. Now, regarding your emotional and personality development, you are a fairly trustworthy little boy, making your share of explorations, excursions into the world of the unknown and forbidden, the bathroom, and under the kitchen sink. Your folks could trust you in most cases, but when all the chocolates have been bite taken out of them, it is a fair guess whose teeth marks have been those jagged impressions. Your thoughtfulness characteristic really doesn't count for much in this module. Most children often find themselves at the mercy of their whims and impulses. You're allowed to be cranky now, and people will tolerate it much better than when you're a teenager. Then your whining and carrying on will, some, will seem more objectionable. One thing about your character that has a tendency to put people off is your aggressiveness. You are a type of baby who likes to pull on loose pieces of clothing, hair, and any bulbous, fleshy object that comes within your reach. You're going to have to learn the meaning of make nice. That wraps up your status for the first module. I hope you like yourself. If not, then you can always try and improve yourself in the modules to come. There's plenty of time. Welcome to childhood. Practice yourself for heaven's sake in little things and thence proceed to greater. Epic Epictetus, 50 to 120 AD. Discourse, BKI chapter 18. There we go. Okay, so now we are a, uh, a child. Uh, we are four years old, exactly. Starting up with our normal stuff that we have continued. Uh, Mom is just taking a job that requires her to be away in the morning and early afternoon. She decides to enroll you in a nursery school program. Upon your arrival, you're greeted by another lady with very skinny legs and large round glasses. There are children playing with buckets of sand, building blocks, and other activities. There in the small is a small boy sitting in the corner with tears streaming from his eyes and his runny nose and cheeks red from crying. Give the lady with the skinny legs a left hook. Yep. What a nasty little boy. I bet you chose this because you thought you might hit her. She ducks your punch and places you firmly on the floor, and next she reads you the riot act. You will behave appropriately. There will be no hitting. Misbehaving will be dealt with with severity. This lady is all business. That They don't call her old iron shins for nothing. Damn, I was hoping to smack that bitch right in the face. Bam! Uh, your mom is in the bathtub taking a nice relaxing bath. You are playing quietly in the room. All of a sudden, the doorbell rings. Mom doesn't seem to hear it. Ignore the doorbell. You don't appreciate the fact that Mom locks herself in the bathroom and has all the fun while you're left alone. Let the stupid doorbell ring. After the fourth ring, answer the bell. You approach the door and say, Who is it? In the most grown-up voice, it is a salesperson asking where your mommy is. Say she's naked in the bathtub. 
The salesman face turns very red. He thanks you and walks quickly out the door. You are developing a knack for bluntness. <laughs> Let's go down here. While you are playing quietly in your room, you are startled by loud, muffled sounds coming from someplace else. It seems that your parents are having a terrible fight over something. Your father's deep voice seems to be shaking the whole house. Your mother's piercing screams sound like she's being hurt terribly. Uh-oh. Disturbed. Stay where you are. Go and see what's happening. The yelling gets louder and louder, and suddenly everything is quiet. When you see your parents later, they act as if nothing has happened. Mom's hair is ruffled, and she seems to be very tired. You can't seem to figure out what has happened. Or can you? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> you have been invited to sleep over at your best friend's house. This is your first sleep away. Mixed feelings. Go to your friend's house as soon as possible. Ask your parents if they will still be there when they get back. Lie to your friend and tell him you're not allowed. Okay, go to your friends. One way of resolving a mixed feeling is to plunge headlong into a risky situation. Although risk-taking is sometimes a sign of emotional maturity, it can be dangerous if you do not take the time to consider the possibility of possible consequences. While you over at your friend's house, you become frightened and demand to be taken home at 2 in the morning. Well, that's, that's great. That's not exactly what I was going for. Soon after you sit down for dinner, your mother announces that the vegetable of the day is Brussels sprouts. Disgust. They suck. Put your finger in your mouth and make a gagging sound. Feed the sprouts to the dog. That's not very fair, is it? You resent having to eat the sprouts, yet you force them on poor old Gudo. Poor Gudo thinks you are doing him a favor. He will also think he's doing you a favor when he sleeps in your room later tonight, releasing the gaseous byproducts of this meal for you have olfactory pleasure. <laughs> Uh, on the note of dog farts, that will wrap up this edition of DOS Time. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.